Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick, and today I'm going to be going over the positional collections. As you know, Harrison Smith and Josh Sitton came out today. I would have a more formal video, but I'm not, I don't have access to my Xbox, so I can't get any gameplay or any, uh, I can't show anything on the Xbox. So you're just going to get the picture of the free safety collection uh, while I talk over it, and I'm going to give my predictions for uh, what possible selections they could make for each team. Obviously, or each player, not each position, uh, but obviously they can. They only will choose one or two or three in terms of corners or uh, running backs or wide receivers, but at the most part they only choose one. I've created a little bit of a spreadsheet here uh, in order to go over this. I have all the players listed, uh, the ones that I think should get the cards. Uh, i got about four at each position relatively, some less, some more, but... Let's get into this. We're going to start out with the linemen. Uh, Josh Sinton was already released. I can't think of linemen, so I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Uh, right now I got Josh, uh, you know, the Josh Sinton, uh, Tyron Smith maybe, uh, Josh Klein. He meant a lot to the Patriots, so uh, since they already gave Travis, Travis Frederick the team of the year, uh, and uh, Pouncey already has a pretty good card, I could see, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and then... With maybe Andrew Whitworth, um, uh, Betonio, um, yeah, I'm running out of linemen. Okay, I don't know my offensive linemen that well. Kill me. All right, um, let's get into this. So at quarterback, I've got four. Uh, Andrew Luck, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, and Phillip Rivers. Uh, Andrew Luck, his best card is a 97 overall, but is limited to 50. Uh, is the uh, Football Outsiders Midseason Award. Uh, the reason he should get it is his, he had the most touchdown passes and he had the third most passing yards uh, behind uh, the next guy, Drew Brees, whose best card is a 97 overall legend. He was tied for most yards with Big Ben, um, which were in front of Andrew Luck, and then he was tied for fifth most passing touchdowns with Tom Brady. Uh, he did have a, a decent amount of interceptions, but only one more than Andrew Luck. Uh, Peyton Manning is the next card, or the next player. His base, his best card is a 97 overall. It is the 24-hour limited prime time card. Uh, he was fourth most in passing yards, and he had the second most passing touchdowns. Only one less than Andrew Luck, and then Philip Rivers, uh, just a card that I'm throwing in there, who doesn't have a high overall card that maybe they could consider. Uh, his best card is a 93, and he had the most passing yards and most and eighth most passing touchdowns. Uh, so. Not the best, but it's just an idea of a guy I'm throwing out there that maybe could get a card just simply because he doesn't have a high overall one. Uh, it would be a decent option. Another one maybe Tony Romo. Uh, next, for running back, I've got three. First is Le'Veon Bell. His best card is a 93 overall. Uh, the MVP card, uh, he had the second most rushing yards behind uh, DeMarco Murray. He had the most receiving yards by a running back, and he had zero fumbles. Uh, so he's my lead candidate for this. He's who I would pick. Uh, next is Justin Forsett. His best card is 90. He had the most yard, most runs of 20 plus yards. Uh, he also had the fifth, fifth most rushing yards. And he averaged the most yards per carry by a running back. Uh, second, er, And then my third option is Arian Foster, whose best card is a 90. And he has the second highest yards per game uh, by... 10 plus yards over the next guy uh, and he was 20 less than DeMarco Murray but Arian Foster did miss a few games. Uh, moving on to wide receiver we're going to start it out with Deshaun Jackson whose best card is an 89. Uh, he was 13th most in receiving yards and he had the highest average per catch by almost four and a half yard or oh, by over four and a half yards. Um, that was of the top 100 receivers uh, by yards uh, total yards uh, so it gives you kind of an idea. Uh, next is Emmanuel Sanders, whose best card is a 91 overall. Uh, he was fifth most in receiving yards, and uh, that was about it. But really a surprise season on how well he did. I had him in all my fantasy leagues, so I did pretty well. Uh, but Emmanuel Sanders, really one of the bright spots. Uh, definitely, I think he deserves a card. Uh, I thought maybe he would hold a few higher like uh, accolades or like higher... 
up in touchdowns or something like that. But he really wasn't. Fifth most receiving yards was kind of the big one. Uh, next is Julio Jones, whose best card is a 92, uh, which was a 24-hour Football Outsiders card. Uh, he was third most in receiving yards, most 20-plus yard receptions, uh, averaged the most receiving yards per game, 0.1 more than Antonio Brown. Uh, but still, uh, he had the most receiving yards per game. Next is Golden Tate, who had a really nice season, not expected to do as well as he did. Calvin Johnson being out for some games obviously helped. Uh, but his best card is an 86, and he had the 7th most receiving yards among receivers. Uh, so I think he definitely is deserving of one. Uh, next is Demarius Thomas, who I didn't know actually did this well. Uh, but his best card is a 92 overall, the team of the week hero. Uh, he had the second most receiving yards in the league behind Antonio Brown. Most yards after catch among the top uh, 100 receivers, which I assume means, you know, he had the most overall. Uh, and he had the second most receptions in the league. Uh, next is Dez Bryant. Uh, Dez's best card is a 95, the 24-hour hero, which I actually have. Plays really well. Uh, he had the 8th eighth, eighth, eighth most receiving yards, and he had the most touchdown receptions by 3 touchdowns. Uh, so he had a pretty solid, pretty damn solid year uh, with 16 touchdowns. Uh, I definitely think he's deserving, but that 95 overall card may hinder his chances a little bit of getting a, a 99 card. Next is Jeremy Macklin, who was ninth most in receiving yards. He was two yards behind Dez, so if he would have caught one more pass for three yards, he would have been eighth most receiving yards. Uh, and he was second in the Comeback Player of the Year voting, so it would be nice to see Jeremy Macklin get that card. Uh, he had just as much of an argument for Comeback Player of the Year as Gronk did, uh, but uh, the voters went with Gronk, uh, so Jeremy Macklin is my final wide receiver. Uh, at fullback, I really... Didn't have much here uh, in terms of who to pick. Uh, so I just went with Tolbert and Reese, uh, whose best cards are 87 and 88, uh, respectively. So uh, there's those. We're going to move on to tight end where I have two. Uh, Martellus Bennett, whose best card is an 85, and he was third most receiving yards among tight ends. Uh, Delaney Walker is my final one, whose best card is a 93, and he is fourth most uh, receiving yards by tight ends and highest average per catch by tight ends. Uh, so my pick, my nod goes to Marty B because he, his highest card's an 85. I'd like to see him get a 99. That'd be kind of cool. D tackle, uh, Jarrell Casey, whose best card is an 89 overall, was the BCA. Uh, and he had most to tackle by a defensive tackle this year. Uh, next is Fletcher Cox, whose best card is a 78, and he had the second most tackles by a defensive tackle. Uh, and then next is Marcel Darius, who is a 92 overall, and he had the most sacks by a defensive tackle. And then finally, uh, Gerald McCoy, whose best card is a 92, uh, and it's a 24-hour uh, Football Outsiders card. I believe that's his best card. Uh, and he had the fourth most sacks by a defensive tackle. Uh, as well as being up there in tackles and tackles for loss. Uh, moving on to defensive end, uh, Cameron Wake, whose best card is a 93. He had the most, uh, eighth most sacks by a defensive lineman, uh, and he had three forced fumbles. Uh, next is Everson Griffin, who had the seven, whose best card is a 93. Uh, he had the seventh most sacks by a defensive lineman. And then moving on to JPP, Jason Pierre Paul, whose best card is a 94. Uh, he had the third most tackles by a defensive lineman, six most sacks by a defensive lineman, and three forced fumbles. Uh, so my nod, I, I think JPP should probably get the get uh get a card. Uh, moving on to outside linebackers, uh, Demarcus Ware uh, is the first one. His best card is a 93 overall. He had the fifth most sacks by a linebacker. Next is Justin Houston, whose best card is a 95, the 24-hour hero or the 24-hour yeah, hero, or whatever we call it, 24-hour limited card. Uh, most sacks by a linebacker, and he had the most sacks overall at 22, a uh, one and a half more than the next person. Uh, next is DeAndre Levy, whose best card is a 96, limited to 50 or 100. I've heard it both ways. I asked on Twitter, and I got like 50 or 100, so I don't even know what it's limited to because I can't check. Uh, he had the second most tackles, over overall tackles, 
uh, two less than Luke Keekley. He had the most solo tackles uh, overall by 16 tackles, and then he had the most tackles uh, by an outside linebacker. Uh, and then finally, Bruce Carter, whose best card is a 90 overall. He was tied for third for most interceptions, and he had the most interceptions by a linebacker by two. Uh, middle linebacker, uh, my, I, I could only come. C.J. Mosley is most likely going to be on the all-rookie team if it is not confirmed already. And so my nod is going to Curtis Lofton or Paul Warlow. I don't have much on Lofton stat-wise, but Warlow was fifth most in tackles, and I believe he was second most solo tackles um, by a middle linebacker behind Keekley. Uh, moving on to corner, where it's kind of hard to look at stats for corners, um, but most of it going on the eye test, and I have one player that should be a lock to get the card, to get one of the cards, and that is Brent Grimes. Uh, his best card is a 92, and he was tied third most interceptions at 5, and he had the most interceptions by a cornerback uh, with uh, Glover Quinn and Tashawn Gibson, uh, Tashawn Gibson uh, the only ones ahead of him at 7 and 6 interceptions. Uh, moving on, Aqib Tlaib, uh, he, he was tied 8th most interceptions at 4. Uh, his best card is a 91. Now, not a huge, not one of the main ones that I would like to see, but uh, definitely an idea for some of them. I'm going to need you, I want you guys to kind of put them in the comments. Uh, let me know who you guys think corner-wise. I've got a lot here. Uh, and the next is Darius Slay. When I posted my list on Twitter, got a lot of love, especially from one guy. So I thought I'm going to include him in my list um, just as a temporary... You know, just an idea, throwing it out there as Darius Slay. Uh, next is Antonio Cromarty, who was tied 27th for most interceptions with three. He also had a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Uh, and his best card is an 88, or you can count the 92 flashback, but I really don't count that. Uh, so Antonio Cromarty is another idea, even though he got demolished in the Broncos-Cardinals game. Uh, next is Byron Maxwell, whose best card is a 93. He had a decently solid season, uh, overshadowed by, uh, obviously, Richard Sherman, and uh, that's kind of like the next guy in Brandon Browner. If Brandon Browner didn't have all his holding penalties and pass interference and all his penalties, um, I think he would probably have a higher overall card than his best right now, which is an 86. Uh, but he kind of got overshadowed because of Revis, but I watch all the, watched all the Patriots games beginning to end, and Browner played very well. Uh, also, going back to that Brent Grimes card, I think it'd be pretty cool if the card art for Brent Grimes was his one-handed interception in front of Megatron. Just a side note. Uh, but back to the list. Uh, Brandon Flowers is next. Uh, his best card is a 92. He was also tied 27th for the most interceptions with three, and he also had a re fumble recovery for a touchdown. And, um... Everybody talked really highly of him for the first uh, 8, 9, 10 games. Kind of fell off at the end as the Chargers kind of fell out of playoff contention. Um, but he's an idea of a card that maybe they could do. Also, Jason McCourty, uh, his best card is a 90, and he also had three interceptions uh, this year. Uh, free safety Harrison Smith has already been announced. Another idea for players they could have given it to would have been uh, Sean Gibson, who's a free safety, I think, and Charles Woodson, even though Woodson has that 97 overall cornerback, Woodson had an amazing year. He was tied 8th for most interceptions with 5. He had a high amount of tackles. I think he was in the top 20, 25, I think he was top 20 for tackles. Uh, a very solid year. Um, but I know why they didn't give it to him, because of the 97, and Harrison Smith had a very solid season as well. Uh, so, no no problems with Harrison Smith getting the free safety. Uh, at strong safety, I've got four. Starting it off with Roman Harper, whose best card is an 85 overall. He has the fourth most interceptions by a safety this year, and most interceptions by a strong safety. Uh, next is James Hedibo, who has uh, the best card of his is an 86. He had fifth most interceptions by a safety and second most interceptions by a strong safety. Next is Brandon May Merriweather, whose best card is an 83. He had the most sacks by a strong safety, 
fourth most sacks by a defensive back, and second most sacks by a safety. And finally is Morgan Burnett, whose best card is a 92 overall. His be- he, he had the most tackles by a defensive back by, almost, by over 15 tackles, I believe. I believe it was like 15 plus an assisted tackle, which I don't really count as a full tackle. Uh, so it was like 15 and a half. Uh, he had the ninth most tackles overall out of every defensive player, and he had the most solo tackles by a defensive back. Uh, moving on to the special teams and kicker and punter, uh, Adam Venateri, whose best card is an 82 overall. Uh, this is for kicker. Uh, he was 30 of 31, was that which was the highest percentage for kicks. Only missed one, uh, and he was three for three from 50 plus yards. Uh, another idea is uh, Parky. But he is assumed to be on the all-rookie team, so I didn't include him. And then the next one is Dan Carpenter, whose best card is an 81. He went 34 for 38. He had the second most makes, tied for the second most makes, uh, behind Steven Gostowski. And he was 6 for 8 from 50-plus yards. Moving on to punter, I've actually got four punters in Marquette King. Uh, whose best card was an 80. Most punts, he, he had the most punts by 15, and he had the most yards by almost 500. Uh, Donnie Jones, whose best card is an 81, tied for uh, tied first for most punts inside the 20, with Drew Butler, who is the next, whose best card is a 66. He was tied first for most punts inside the 20. And finally, Tress Way, Whose best card? He does not have a card in Mutt currently, so definitely a high, definitely a candidate that I would like to see since he doesn't have a card. Uh, he had the highest average per punt, point zero one more than uh, Brian Anger, and point one more than Sam uh, Cook or Cock or however you want to say it. Uh, and then if they would want to include a kick return or punt return, kick return idea, maybe Devin Hester. Uh, would be a cool idea. Maybe just special teamers. Uh, Matthew Slater, who's perennial pro bowler for the Patriots. That's uh, special teams. Uh, Edelman actually had a nice year as a kick and punt returner. Uh, we've seen him doing it in the past. You remember that golden ticket Julio Jones. Was that two years ago or was that was that last year or two years ago? Uh, you could play him at other positions, but he was listed at kick and punt returner. Uh, so maybe they could do something with that. Um, hopefully they include... <laughs> Uh, some of the positions that they forgot in, or uh, maybe they could even do long snappers, um, uh, maybe a third down running back, uh, different stuff like that. They could incorporate some cool things, uh, maybe have a number one superstar corner collection, have a kind of secondary corner collection, which like the superstar one maybe could be Brent Grimes, uh, the secondary one could be maybe Brandon Browner or Byron Maxwell, and then maybe like a lower tier one that could maybe be Darius Slay, uh, just an idea personally for me that they could do something like that uh, instead of maybe just giving the best players cards, um, or maybe at wide receiver, you know, Deshaun Jacks, you know, like Julio could get the superstar along with Demarius Thomas and then maybe like slot Deshaun Jackson or something like that, that'd be pretty cool, uh, but those are just my opinions, let me know what your guys' predictions for any of the cards, uh, that might be coming, uh, any of the positional collections. Let me know if you think I missed anybody or should have included someone. Uh, keep in mind I tried to not give it to cards to players that uh, already have higher order cards such as Tom Brady who has a 99. If you remember the positional collection in 2012 was uh, Michael Vick. Well Michael Vick already has a 99 so I don't see them giving it to him. Kind of stuff like that. Um, not always doesn't mean they had a good season, uh, but I tended to try to go around players that had a pretty good season, solid season, so at least uh, maybe fans of that team can be rewarded for good play uh, from one of their players. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, sorry for kind of just the picture, but uh, you can always have closed the browser and just listen to my voice while doing something else. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out, guys.